So as you have probably seen in software, one thing that we often add to our API endpoints is something called rate limiting. And there's various reasons why you want to add rate limiting. The first basic reason is, let's say you want to create an API and you want to build your business model around selling data, but you wanted to give some type of free tier, right? So they can hit your API maybe 10 times a day. This is a form of rate limiting. And what it does is it allows you to paywall the data so that users can actually pay you for more um, API requests, right? So that's one approach. Another approach that is really useful for rate limiting is if you look at the OpenAI API, they actually have rate limits on all of their computations, right? So if you want to generate images with the Dolly 2 um, API, they have this rate limited to 50 images a minute. So why do they do this? Basically, it's a way to protect their system and also prevent users from basically hogging all the resources. It wouldn't be cool if one person just basically stole all the resources and computation time so this type of rate limiting is kind of more in place to make it fair use. So like everyone has a chance to hit the API instead of someone with a bunch of money, just like overwhelming the system for their own needs. And then of course, the other scenario is protecting your system. So I'll give a real life work uh, use case. We are using open search at work and we have an API over here and we have a request that users can make that does a really computational expensive query against our open search cluster. So the issue with this is that when authenticated users accidentally all make this request around the same time, it actually brings the entire cluster down to like a slow halt. So we basically added some type of rate limiting to say, hey, this query can only be done so many times a second because if you go over like 20 times a second, the query is actually super computational expensive and it causes a lot of issues in our system. So those are three good scenarios for adding rate limiting to your application. And I do have a project set up here that I'll show you how to set up rate limiting on your next JS application using the app router. But before I dive into that, I do wanna say that this video is sponsored by Upstash, which is the service we will be using for setting up a Redis instance to track when people are making requests by IP address. Uh, let me just show you what we have over here. So on our API, it's a simple, route here called API slash expensive. And it basically just does a request to get some Pokemon data and returns it, right? A really basic API. But let's say you do at some point wanted to put a paywall in front of this. Well, you probably want to rate limit those requests so that users can't just keep on grabbing Pokemon data. So if I go ahead and do my get request here, you will see that it just sends back a ton of Pokemon data. And use your imagination, this could actually do a lot more expensive computations that you might want to limit in the future. So how do we add rate limiting to this application using the Upstash service? So if you make an account on Upstash and create a new database, I already have one created over here. They will give you some configuration um, URLs and keys that you can potentially use. We are going to be using the Upstash slash Redis connection here. So if you click on this, this is what we're going to be using in our next application to connect to Upstash. And they'll give you a URL that you need to use and also a token. So you can go down here, you can copy these tokens if you want to. And you can set those in your .env. So if I go over to my .env file, notice that I have my upstash rest URL, which is right here. And then I also have my token, okay, which is going off the screen, which is good. So you guys can't see it. But once you have that set up in your .env file, what we can actually do is we can start bringing in some packages to add rate limiting to this API endpoint. And I do want to state that in my scenario that I'm showing, I'm just showing you like a regional endpoint, but you can actually apply rate limiting to every endpoint by using middleware if you want to. And if you do plan to go down that path, you can use this upstash slash Redis approach, which will work in your edge functions. Okay, so if you want to do it in the edge function, make sure you grab that one. So now let's just go ahead and start bringing in some of the Redis packages that we'll need to set up rate limiting. It's actually pretty easy. You bring in a rate limit from upstash slash rate limit, and you also need to import Redis from upstash slash Redis. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a rate limiter. So basically you can say, hey, use my environment variable, set up a connection to Redis and set up a rate limiter, which is going to allow one request every 10 seconds. So you can kind of configure this the way you need it to. You can do seconds, minutes, um, hours um, based on whatever your business needs are. But, but just for demo purposes, I'm going to set this as one and then I have to wait 10 seconds until I can do it again. So now what we want to do is we're going to pretend like we have a public API and we want to limit people based on IP address. Okay. Maybe you have a public API that's serving Pokemon data and you don't want the same user trying to abuse your system and just keep on getting that data as often as possible. So one approach you can do is rate limiting by IP, which in next, you can just say request.headers.get x forwarded for, and this works pretty well when you deploy it to Vercel. 
Um, you might have to change this up a little bit depending on where you deploy. Some people don't set this headers, um, but this works fine in Vercel, and that's where I'm going to deploy it in this video. So once you get the IP, you can pass it to this rate limit dot limit function. And what this basically does is checks Redis to see, hey, is there already an entry, and is that entry been expired already? So we're going to call this. This checks Redis to see if someone with that IP has already hit this endpoint in the last 10 seconds, and if no one has, you get a success of true boolean back. So we can actually just say if there is no success boolean, then we are going to go ahead and just return a 429 too many request error and also give them a retry after header. So this kind of tells the client in the browser, hey, like you've reached a limit in terms of how many times you can hit this endpoint. But what you could do is wait like five seconds and then you could do your request again. And then the UI can add a bunch of additional logic to basically retry or wait or tell the user like what needs to happen. Okay, so now that that is all set up, what we can actually do is if I go into my Thunder client and just go ahead and make this request, the first one will go through because again, we haven't hit this endpoint yet. So let's just go ahead and click send. Notice that it works fine. But now if I were to hit it again, notice that we get back that 429 too many requests. This API endpoint has now been limited, which is awesome. That's exactly what we're going for. And if I go to my response headers, you'll see that there is a retry after and this says four seconds. So this is basically telling us, hey, retry again in four seconds and you should be able to do this, right? And after I wait some time and click send again, everything goes through. And again, this will just keep on rate limiting and you have to kind of wait again until it expires. And as you keep on hitting, you'll see it counts down. And that is basically all you need to do to add rate limiting to your API endpoints. It's super easy. I definitely recommend using Upstash. It has a lot of nice features. One thing that's cool is if you go to this data browser, let's go ahead and click this rate limit endpoint one more time and refresh, you will see that you'll see I have a rate limit um, entry for my IP address. This is just like my local host callback um, loopback thing. But if we were to actually deploy this to Vercel, which I do have it already deployed over here, so I have a deployment. And if I were to hit this endpoint instead, you will see that this actually gets my IP address and instead it's going to track that as a key. So let's just go ahead and put that there. I will hit this endpoint, click send. And notice here in this key, we actually have um, an IP address now. So this is going to rate limit based on my IP and then I have to wait 10 seconds and then this will automatically expire. And again, I want to emphasize that Upstash provides regional databases and you can have this working on the edge. So if you want to go and create a database that has multiple regions, so if I go down to the bottom of my database and I say manage my reason, regions, you can actually go in here and you can start adding a bunch of different regions in here so that when your middleware endpoints are running from edge, they can connect to a closer server and also do the rate limiting at a much faster um, pace than if you just stick to one region. So also if you go to Upstash's quick start tab here and go to next 13, they will show you how to get this all set up using the app components where you can actually have rate limiting set up directly inside of your server rendered components like so. And as you saw in my video, it's uh, super easy to get it set up. So I will want to say that you can use Redis for more than just rate limiting. As I did in a previous video, you can actually use it for caching, which is a way to speed up your applications. So they don't have to keep on hitting databases and doing expensive computations. You can just store that in a cache for a little bit of time, and then you'll be fetching that data directly from a cache. And I really like Upstash because they also have a nice usage panel, which gives you some analytics as to like how many cache hits you're getting a day and how many cache misses. You can see like that's just me doing my requests a second ago. You can see how big the data size is. You can see the throughput of how many commands a second you're doing. So it just gives you a nice little breakdown of your usage on their platform. If you are ever looking for the example code that I showed you in this video, be sure to go to this URL that I'll put in the description of the video below. And you can check out how I rate limited the API endpoint by going to slash API slash expensive slash route.ts. You can see the same code that I showed you in this video. So if you guys enjoyed watching, be sure to give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. Like always, I have a Discord channel and you're welcome to join if you just want to find a place to talk to other developers and get some help or just hang out with uh, other devs in general. Have a good day and happy coding.